Hi, I want to talk to you again today about morning pages. Um, I did cover this in a video uh, which you'll find down below if you want to take a look, but this time I wanted to cover it from a slightly different perspective. Um, writing morning pages has many benefits, but a lot of people don't find it easy, don't know how to start, don't know how to get going. So I thought what I'd do is I'd share my journey with you, uh, my technique, how I lay out my notebook, why I use four pages instead of three, uh, and how I use what appears in my morning pages uh, and really make the most of them. Okay, so if you're not familiar with morning pages, that's the first thing. It's from Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. Okay, this is my copy. Um, as you can see, it's fairly well read, and I'll probably read it again after I finish making this video. So, uh, morning pages. So I was first introduced to the idea by uh, a playwright that I really admire. His name's Sebastian Bunchkevich. We'd been at a writing workshop at a place in Scotland called Moniac Moor. This is a really lovely place. If you get a chance to go, I'd, I'd really recommend it. We were at the end of the course. He was one of the tutors. And just he was preparing to leave, standing there with his suitcase and his, his coat on. He mentioned morning pages and showed us his notebook that he uses. And he pointed to the lines and he said, these are the bedrock of everything I've done. And I thought, blimey, I'll have some of that. We all crowded round and had a look at these scribbled lines and someone had noticed he'd written and so it goes over and over again a few times and, and sort of asked him what was that all about? And he said, well, if I'm writing my morning pages and my mind goes blank for a moment, I just kind of write and so it goes over and over again until something else clicks in. And this is because one of the most important aspects of writing morning pages is that you don't stop. You just keep the pen or pencil moving across the page. You don't stop. You don't think. You just write. And the thing is, it's easy to say you just keep writing. But what I discovered is that this isn't actually that easy, especially when you're first starting to do morning pages. We're so used to thinking about what we're going to say and what we're going to write and how we're going to say it that we automatically censor ourselves without realising that's what we're doing. A lot of people also worry about the fact that, you know, if someone might find this writing and read it and, well, what then? They're going to judge us, ridicule us, what? This is all part of being too concerned with what other people think and letting that fear influence what we do. Morning pages are a chance to release ourselves from these kind of constraints. But this is something that we have to learn to do. I recently introduced the idea of morning pages to a writer I'd met and she said, I didn't know where to start. And I said, well, that's where you start, by just writing that you don't know where to start. And then you just see what comes next. You just let your mind be free. Just let go and follow the writing. It's this letting go that can be difficult, giving yourself permission to write absolutely anything because it's just not something we're, we're really allowed to do in life. It's this freeing up that makes it a journey of self-discovery. We're not controlling. We're not consciously creating. We're just kind of really along for the ride. It's important not to get too hung up on this being of any value as well because it might not be. Writing these pages that it's, it's, you're not actually in the process of making something, but it can be cleansing and outpouring. Don't forget that this is private writing, writing that's just for you. You can say anything you want, anything. And it's the real benefit. The real benefit comes from those unexpected words. When you learn to let go, writing morning pages really is a bit like meditation. It doesn't matter if they're repetitive or trivial or don't seem important. You just do it. As Julia Cameron says, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do them. I guess another way of looking at that is the fact that however you do them is the right way for you. You just do it. So I've been writing morning pages for a few years now, and they've really become a daily ritual. I write them every weekday morning. I give myself sort of weekends off because I think it helps to give that muscle a rest. If there's a weekday I can't do it for some reason, I can actually feel a bit anxious about that. It's almost like something I just have to do. So anyway, let's talk about my notebook layout. Julia Cameron says you use three pages, right? Three sides of, well, she says she's American. So she uses letter size pages, which are slightly bigger than A5. It's sort of between A5 and A4. I'm in Britain, so I use a A5. I use a lined, look term 1917 medium hardback notebook. And I've tried lots and this is the one I like best for this particular purpose. I'll be making another video out of my notebook soon. But yeah, I like the spacing of the lines. I like the size of the pages. I like the, the sort of feel of the book. So what I do every Friday is I lay out my notebook for the following week. I use four sides for each day. Each day on the first side, I'll write what day it is and the date. And then I'll write the date on the following three sides. And then on the fourth side, this is for my evening check-in at the end of the day. So in the morning, I'm doing uncontrolled free writing, my morning pages. In the evening, I do a reflection on the day. So yeah, there'll be another video on that too soon. 
So at the top of that fourth page, I write notes, check in queue, and I underline that. Uh, I use a pencil because my handwriting is terrible, and this helps keep my writing at least a little bit legible, and I keep a highlighter pen on the notebook too. So I start to write, and as I'm going along, if anything comes up that I feel is important or, or might be, or just maybe interesting, or is something, you know, there's something there that I might want to act upon or think about more, I quickly draw two little lines in the margin, but I keep writing. So I keep writing, and eventually I've done my three pages. And they take me about 20 minutes. Then if there's anything that seems important, you know, I've done my little lines in the margin. This is where the highlighter comes in. If I've made any marks in the margin, I'll go back and take a look at those and, you know, maybe highlight those points. And these are usually creative ideas for videos or writing or more practical things like I should really rename my YouTube channel from The Overthinker, which it was, to Martin Sketchley, which it is now. And that came up in Morning Pages. So it's almost like someone else is giving you advice. And I guess that's maybe your subconscious. The value in these highlights is that for me, they tend to be the real meat of the pages, the real value in the ritual and the time spent and the actual effort made in going and sitting and writing them before I do anything else in the day. Because sometimes it would be easy not to do these things. It would be easy not to write these pages. I could just get up and go out and walk the dog and then get on with my day and get a head start. I'm, you know, I'm spending 20, 25 minutes here writing some stuff and it might not be of any use. But when it is of use, it's really useful. So there we go. That's morning pages. As I said, I'll be covering the evening check-in again and also the various notebooks that I used and the ones I've used in the past and which ones I've liked and which ones I haven't so much. Um, but if there's anything else you'd like to see me cover, just let me know in the comments. Okay? Bye for now.